Cool, 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 cool. All right, ready. Yo, welcome back to Containing Luxury. On this episode, we're installing our impact windows on our shipping container. Home, well, let's get started. Okay guys, before we get started on our installation of our impact windows, just remember, giveaway container. We need your help with the link in the description to the GoFundMe. As soon as we reach that $20,000 goal, we are going to be giving this thing away. We're probably about three weeks away from being finished. Uh, it's gonna be really cool. So we appreciate everyone's support. Let's get started on these windows. Using glue and pixie sticks. Okay, so after we finished that frame and we finally got that in place, then we went ahead and actually started putting our window box in. Because of building the shipping container, really with the idea of it, everything lasting for a really long time, it, we, we went ahead and used a PVC board rather than an, a pine or something wood that may rot over time. We wanted to use something that would virtually just last forever. So we, we went ahead and applied that same PL uh, that Loctite PL3X premium adhesive, and we stuck that directly to the metal frame and we clamped it. Now that glue is super, super strong, but that's not all we did. So that glue is just literally holding our bucks in so that when we, we slid our impact window in or when we slide our impact window in, we can actually drill, we'll pre-drill through that buck, through the steel, and put a fastener that goes all the way through that, that, that PVC buck through the steel. And then we're gonna go ahead and cut the heads off of the screws. We can even tack weld them a little bit right there and then grind them nice and smooth. Now that's a decent amount of work, but it actually wasn't that bad. And what that's gonna do is make that window that it could never go anywhere. Um, but the glue itself is actually insanely strong. After we let that, that glue set up, we, took, we pulled our clamps the next day and we could not remove one. It was, you'd shake the whole container just with the adhesive. Wow, that's actually nuts. What's going on? Giant heat stroke? Uh, what, uh, what do you want from this food truck? I got, uh, I got chunks of steel, I got plastic, cardboard, uh, welding sticks. It's definitely not coming back, guarantee it. I would like food. So I should've waited on this until I put those in so fast panels in. I wonder if it says on the specifications. Why are you? What is this? Is it raw? Wow, that's gorgeous. All right, let me see if I can find an installation structure on this thing. So I tried to jump the gun a little bit and I built my frame for my window before I actually got the windows and I went off the specifications that they had online. And what they had online was apparently the tip to tip dimensions, not the buck dimensions. My frame, I added to put a three quarter inch board all the way around on top of the dimensions that they gave me online for the specifications. The reality is that they, that was the full size of the window, not including the bucks, or you would have to subtract three quarters of an inch all the way around for the bucks. So I ended up an inch and a half larger, both width and height than I should have been on my uh, window frame. But you can always fix things. Uh, you know, I could have gone back and changed my window frame, but it wasn't worth the additional work. There's a little fine tuning with moldings and stuff that you can kind of fix stuff. So if you overbuild something, it's always bigger to be, or better to be a little bit bigger. You can always shut it, you know, trim it down. But if you overdo something and you know, it's a major, it's a lot of work to change it, you might be able to make do and just you know make some alterations in your design to make it work. Even the pros make mistakes here and there. So I kind of jumped the gun already. Um, we installed the bucks, and then what I did was I kind of glued even the back end. I, I took that same PL adhesive and I almost caulked it in, or I guess I did caulk it in all the way around. 
which is not only gonna add one more layer of this thing being super strong stuck to it, but it also is completely sealed. So like ants or bugs or anything, any penetration anywhere around these things, I wanna make sure I like triple double seal. So that's just one added thing I just did. And then after, once we're putting the insulation in, I'm gonna spray foam nice and tight or where it's tight like this, I'll probably put another bead of the liquid nails around it. Um, and then wherever it gaps, I'll spray foam in there. But you can kind of see we all overhung this in. Now this is not just a random dimension. This was the exact dimension of the insulated panels that we're putting in. And when we get to that video, we'll show you that it should, in theory, because I went off the specifications, that it should flush right up to the face of it. So hopefully when we put those panels in, this will be nice and, and solid at that, this location. So I can just put my face plates on and, and uh, be good to go. Or my window casing, not face plates, window casing. That's the right word. Oh yeah. This is like a whole new level to eating glue. Last time, you can see I kind of had to use a bunch of clamps because those PVC boards are not as rigid as your regular wood. Um, so they actually kind of went down the rail and bent. So we put the clamps in a bunch of places to keep them nice and straight. We'll let that cure probably overnight. And then tomorrow we're gonna start on our window install. We got food all over the floor. I dropped my plate of food. So, um, what are we talking about? We could probably silicone around, or not silicone, but polyurethane around the perimeter, but it'll be easier once I don't have the clamps all over it. So after we got that window frame completely installed and we had our box in and it, the container had a little bit of time to cool down because you don't really want to apply that polyurethane sealant right over nice hot welds. And another thing you may want to do is actually kind of clean that, those outside welds and treat them with a rust inhibitor. I actually don't have that footage, but we'll put a link to the rust inhibitor. You can pick it up at um, Lowe's or Home Depot. And you just want to treat those welds so they don't rust. And then what we went ahead and did was we actually put the, um, it's actually called Quad. We'll put a link in the description to it. But uh, the Quad adhesive, or actually I'll, I'll grab a tube because I have it. There it is. Ow. Just wheel my head into the garage door. Okay, so for all of our window frames, once they were all nice and welded and cooled, had time to cool down, we spot treated the welds with the rust inhibitor. And then we went ahead and applied this quad. Uh, it's made by OSI, tougher than the elements. It's just a super insanely uh, all purpose sealant. So for windows and trim, I haven't found anything that outlasts this stuff. So it's pretty expensive and it's very difficult to work with. It's super messy. It takes like three or four days to dry. It leaves it looking like a weld around the window, uh, which was kind of nice because it looks like a big, huge weld all around the entire frame, but it's also an insanely strong sealant for waterproofing. So that was what we chose to go ahead and do around the perimeter of our frames once we got them in place. So with our windows, the first thing we had to do because they're so heavy, they're impact rated, we pulled the bottom layer. So they're, they're single hung windows. We went ahead and removed the lower end of the window, which was the bottom window on the single hung. So once by doing that, it pretty much reduced the weight by about 50%. But before we actually started installing the windows, we first, we had a double window on this one. So we had to pull it in a mullion or mull bar. So that's just an, a solid aluminum piece that we have fastened into the bottom sill of the window frame. And what that does, it's gave us a center bar that's super strong tacked into the steel so that it acts as like the side frame for the middle of the two windows. Installing our first window, we went ahead and after we had that window, or the, uh, the screen taken out and the bottom layer of the window, it makes it light enough that one guy technically could put the window in. And it has to come from the outside in because it has a little lip on the outside. Now we went ahead and gave ourselves about an eighth inch extra on our window box. So that's tight framing. We, we have an eighth of an inch around the perimeter of the window, but then there's the flange on the outside of the window. So that flange goes and sits tight against the box on the window. So that kind of holds it as a stopping point. So that window could only go so far in from the outside. So one guy can hold that nice and tight against that flange, against the box, 
and the guy on the inside can sit there and pre-drill with uh, you know, a nice steel bit through the PVC bucks that we made through the steel frame of the two by two angle iron that we installed and then put a screw yeah. all the way through that. Now, depending on where that frame lands, you may or may not see the screw when it actually penetrates through from the outside. If it lands on the inside, not a big deal. You're never gonna see it because your insulation, your framing is gonna cover it. But if it lands on the outside, you probably don't want an ugly screw head screwed through your frame. So what we did on those few locations is we went ahead and took our grinder and cut them off nice and tight. And then we actually put a little tack weld on it and then ground it nice and smooth. It sounds like a pretty extensive process, but we wanted we only have two, two openings on this container. So it wasn't that much work, but we wanted to make sure that this thing is like super, super strong. So that was how we, we fastened our windows to the, uh, to, the, to the window frames themselves. Now, if you don't have two windows going in, you obviously don't need to have a mole bar. So on the back side of the container, it was a lot easier of a process. We just had the frame, the bucks, the window went right in, and uh, we just followed the same process we did on the first window. And that one actually went a little bit smoother because obviously the more you do, the quicker you get at it. Five years in a row, hand model of the year. So uh, now you have a good idea of how to install impact windows. If you're not using impact windows, it's virtually the exact same process. So we hope this video has been good. Remember, link in the description to the GoFundMe so we can give this thing away. And uh, like and subscribe. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Containing luxury, out!